welcome to Science Access. In today's class, we'll be starting the Protozoa series, and what we'll be discussing in today's class is outlined below. Brief description of the term Protozoa, we'll talk about the characteristics of Protozoa, we'll also talk about the classification of Protozoa, then we'll talk about the alveolata or the alveolate, where we'll discuss the phylum Ciliophora. We'll talk about the general characteristics of the Ciliophora and Paramecium as a representative of the Ciliophora will be discussed in details. The term protozoa is derived from two words, proto meaning first and zoa meaning animal. They are diverse group of animals which originate from different lineage. The fact that they originate from different lineage, they are termed polyphyletic, meaning they come from different lineage. Protozoa are microscopic unicellular and eukaryotic organism. Eukaryotic organisms, as you are aware, have a well-defined nucleus and they have a relatively complex internal structure. Some are motile, using cilia, flagella, pseudopodia for movement, while others are sensor or non-moving. Others, however, are slow-moving organisms. What are the characteristics of protozoa? As I said earlier, they are unicellular or single cell organisms. Some are free living, some are symbiotic. They are microscopic, as I said earlier. They lack cell wall. Remember, they are animal like. So they lack cell wall just like animals. They are heterotrophic. Remember also, they are animal like. Animals are actually heterotrophic. They do not produce their food like plants. So because they are animal like, they are also heterotrophic. They usually reproduce through binary fission and conjugation. This concept of reproduction will be explained in a separate video. Examples of protozoa include the amoeba, the paramecium, the euglena, trypanosoma, we have the plasmodium, so many noctoluca species and the lesmania species. Let's talk about the classification of protozoa. Protozoa is considered to be a sub-kingdom of the kingdom Protista and they are a diverse group comprising of a number of separate lineage. As I said before, separate lineage means polyphyletic. They have different ancestors or different descendants. In this case, we call the separate lineage as clad. A clad is a group that originates from a common ancestor. In other words, all descendants, both living and extinct, are actually from a common ancestor. The cloud of protozoa are avulate or the avulata, we have the amoeboid protozoa and the excavata. As you can see from the tree diagram, the cloud under the subkingdom protozoa are avulate or avulata, amoeboid protozoa and excavata. Now under the avulate we have the phylum ciliophora phylum dinoflagellata and ap complexa what this means is that ciliophora or the ciliates the dinoflagellates and the ap complexans actually originated from a common ancestors why the amoebozoa the foraminifera radiolaria and there is a last one the secozoa actually originate from a common clad or ancestor called the amoeboid protozoa and the Euglenozoa, Parabersalia, and Heterolobosi originated from a common ancestor or the clad called Excavata. We will be discussing the clad Avulata, under which the Cilophora dinoflagellata and Epicomplexa is placed. Now we will be talking about the phylum Cilophora. Cilophora are commonly called ciliates. Ciliates are the most structurally complex of all living protozoa. They derive their names or their nomenclature from the fact that their body surface is covered with cilia that beat in a coordinated manner. Let's talk about the characteristics of ciliates. They possess cilia for movement, which usually beat in a coordinated manner. They exhibit what we call the nuclear dimorphism, that is having two different kinds of nucleus in their cell. They also have a fixed shape due to the covering of pedicle, as you can see from the diagram of Balentidus species on the screen. You can see the cilia, the finger-like projection from the surface. You can see the uh, two types of nucleus. We have the macro nucleus or macro that is big, 
I'll have the micronucleus, which is a small nucleus. The external covering, as you can see from the diagram, is called pedicle, and this actually gives them the fixed shape. Some seedlings are actually parasitic, while others are free living. Example of a parasitic one is the Balentidion coli, while um, a free living seedlet is the Paramecium. They reproduce by binary fission, multiple fission, in asexual reproduction, while sexually they carry out conjugation. Let's take a look at the Paramecium as a representative of the phylum Silophora. Paramecium, as you can see from the diagram, is a single cell, meaning the entire organism is actually one cell. As you can see from the diagram, it has nucleus and other specialized organelles, meaning it is actually a eukaryotic organism. The entire length is around 0.5 mm, and their body is entirely covered with cilia which is actually used for movement. They are found in fresh water, brackish water, as well as in marine environment. Let's talk about the structure of paramecium. They possess micro, small, or a macro, large nucleus. They have the aura groove, which is actually used for taking food, as you can see from the diagram. In the cilia is the finger-like projection covering the entire surface and usually used for movement. We also have the contractor vacuum, which is used for osmoregulation, balancing salt and water. In the body of the paramecium, we have the food vacuum and other structure that you can see from the diagram. Let's talk about the feeding habits of paramecium. They actually feed on bacteria, yeast, amoeba, algae, and other paramecium. They carry out holozoic mode of nutrition, where they actually take in particulate organic matter. The constant lashing of the cilia of the oral group actually drive this particulate matter along with water into the vestibulum and from there into the buca overture, where it passes into the cytostome or the cell mat. From the cytostome, the food passes through the cytopharynx, where it is collected at the base into a membranous vesicle. This membranous vesicle is later released into the cell as food vacuum. Digestion occurs inside the food vacuum where protein is being digested by the proteins, carbohydrate by the carbohydrates or amylase, and the lipid by the lipase. Undigested food is eventually expelled from the body through the anal pores or the cytoplasm. Let's talk about locomotion in paramecium. This is simply done with the use of the cilia which beat in a coordinated manner. And lastly, let's discuss reproduction in paramecium. Paramecium carry out asexual reproduction through binary fission, which is the most common type of reproduction in paramecium. However, sexual reproduction is also occur through conjugation. We have other type of reproduction in paramecium such as the cytogamy, octogamy and domysis. In this video, we will be concentrating on binary fission. Other type of reproduction in paramecium will be discussed when we talk about the topic reproduction in living organism. Binary fission in paramecium actually occur under favorable condition when food is abundant and when temperature is favorable. This process actually begins by the division of the micronucleus or the small nucleus into two daughter cells through the process of mitosis and these daughter cells move towards the opposite end while simultaneously the macronucleus or the big nucleus divide amitotically into two usually through the elongation of the macronucleus and the two uh, macronucleus migrate also to the opposite end the two original contractor vacuum remain at both opposite end and a new contracted vacuum is actually formed at both end, making each daughter cell possess the usual two contractor vacuum. Two new aura grooves begin to form, one at the anterior and the other at the posterior. And a constriction furrow begins to form at the middle. Eventually, the paramecium divides into two daughter cells. A summary of this process is being displayed on the screen. This is the end of today's lecture. In our further series, maybe on reproduction, we will discuss conjugation and others. Thanks for watching.
please subscribe to support this channel thanks